Hello everyone and welcome back to Around the World in 80 Planes. In this flight I'm gonna fly from Genoa to Rome in a Piaggio P180 Avanti, which is a very interesting aircraft. Uh, it says there's a minor problem loading the aircraft, but I've flown it in this version before, so hopefully it'll be alright. And uh, this is what it looks like. Yep, that's pretty unique. That's pretty unique right there. And uh, I'd rather have a Beechcraft Starship, to be honest, which is also a dual pusher prop, but there isn't a good Beechcraft Starship for X-Plane 11, nor was there one for Flight Sim 10 either, as far as I remember. Uh, but that's one of my favorite planes, uh, Burt Rutan design, the Beechcraft Starship was. And, uh, well, it'd be high on my modeling list if I had the gumption to model planes for X-Plane 11. That's quite a bit harder than modeling things for for a uh, Kerbal Space Program, so I still have a lot of practicing to do, especially since they updated Blender. Anyway, but this is a freeware Piaggio P180, and we will see how it works. It's very unique because of that really slender wing, uh, presumably gets a lot of body lift and all. Okay, but uh, yep, we will continue with the Apollo 12 audio, and where we left off, they were about to make a landing, and I've taken a listen to the audio ahead and it seems like we should get to the landing during this video. So without further ado, pressing play, Let's see flaps work. And traffic Houston, uh, the computer is yours, brake, clipper, Houston, we have quite a wind against us. Clippers on the way. Well, those planes with canards and horizontal stabilizers. Okay, I hope I sort of uh, like that myself. No. Excuse me, Dick, I'm looking at the wrong register. Uh, 0.22 at uh, about uh, 3 feet per second. I've got it. I've got you at 0.25 on the uh, VHF. And the tape meter looks good. I'll show you going a good way down a plane to me for some reason. I've got the same thing myself, I understand it's coming, it's coming back a little while. Oh, clouds. Oh, well, we'll try and get above. Well, actually that's pretty seen. No, that's okay. Yeah. Okay, coming on. They're just discrete clouds rather than a full cloud cover. Have my lights? Sure do. Okay, you're tracking lights on. Clipper Houston, computer short. Okay, let's see. I want to know. Okay, it looks like 260 is where the yellow zone is. So, a uh, pretty decent cockpit for freeware. I need to. I mean, it seems really hard to do so, but. Learning how to make 3D okay, cockpits for planes mind. would be a good thing, because. There are a lot of freeware planes that have the external model, but not the cockpit. My verb 83 shows you 4.7 and 3.8 seconds. They have 2D only. But that seems time intensive, so. Okay, Houston, 
Houston, I'm going to P40 for you to look at it. Roger, P, stand by. So we're just following the Italian coast down. Okay, can I go? Roger, go. We'll cut back over Italy in order to get to Venice on the next flight. So normally the land landing would be more than an hour away from what they're currently doing, but of course I've cut out large silences in the audio. So that compresses things. Uh, stand by one second. Currently over Rapallo. Not easy to see it. The clouds are ganging up on us. That's sort of a nice angle. Houston, what time is AOS? Uh, traffic Houston, uh, LOS is coming up uh, in four minutes. Sudden cloud compression is a little bit weird. Still. There's a star angle difference, Houston. Four balls, two. Coming at you with the torquing angle. Roger, Pete. How's that grab you? You looking at the disky? Those are great. Your go for DOI. Houston, we're looking at an AOS of 109.43.30. And Clipper, Houston, we're looking for you, AOS, at 109.41. Yeah, the main thing that was cut out was the section where they're going behind the moon. And 
of course, Earth is no longer in communication with them. Intrepid Yankee Clipper, you're looking good. Uh, one minute tail OS, we'll see you on the other side. Yes, sir, and after all that jazz about uh, the uh, LCD, old Al Zebron is a half degree off the jaw and a half degree off the pitch. This is the noise level, and I can see it out the window, no screen. Beautiful, be beautiful. We're approaching the city of La Spezia. That's that bay up ahead. There seems to be a gap in the scenery to my left, I don't know. Or maybe that's just some cloud effect. No, that's the uh, right around the 40 mark. It's off about three quarters of a degree to the right. Oh no, that's water, okay. I was wondering if it was some sort of scene, but no, that's uh... That's uh... Monte Marcello... Magra or something. This is Apollo Control. We've had loss of signal on both spacecraft. This it's water. The the end of revolution number 13. So, all is well. When we acquire again in some uh, 46 minutes from now, Nice view of La Spezia. And, uh, my director, Cliff Charlesworth, here just advised all his flight controllers to take the last break during the period that we're out of contact with the spacecraft. And at 108 hours and 57 minutes, round elapsed time, this is Apollo Control. Last break. <laughs> Out, go now or hold your pee. Highway we are following basically is the A12 on the map. Yep, you know things are happening when they're all showing up. Too many people to name. Let's uh, go live now and uh, see how the burn went for descent orbit initiate.
sort of whole continuous stretch of city here. I don't know if it's all lumped in with Masa, which is the city we're coming up on. I don't see any other names on the map. Basically flying over Massa now. So we're approaching the city of Pisa, famous for its Leaning Tower. Unfortunately, I I swooped down on the city in a previous flight, and I did not see the Leaning Tower, though it's not really that tall, so it might not have sort of made the list of really impressive monuments, nor would it be the easiest thing to spot. The airport in Pisa is Galileo Galilei International, so... Lots of uh, impressively named airports in Italy. We still got a pretty strong wind against us, I think. Or no, maybe not. Let's see. Well, 30 knots or so. That's, yeah, 12,000 feet. I just sort of, I can tell because at some points it seems like we're moving a bit sideways. Makes it seem like there's a good okay, stiff wind. So right there is Pisa, on the river. Roger, go ahead. Roger, LOS, one, one, zero, five, five, two, five, one, 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 two, zero, zero, one, 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 four, one, three, two, over. Roger, copy. Still a fairly restrained city, not the biggest thing on the planet. The river is the Arno River. Coming up on 30 minutes to 
power descent initiation. Mark, 30 minutes. And uh, that airport that we're flying over is Galileo Galilei International. And Just the one runway. Data, oh wait, two runways, sorry, my mistake. We got a two Sometimes runways look a lot like taxiways. Reposition. Uh, that city up ahead is Livorno. You're about 30 degrees above our right now, Houston. And you're about uh, a one third crest moon, and you really are beautiful. See blues and white. Roger, Alex. Put on our best for you. Al, complimenting the Earth. We're pretty well smoothed out up here Lots of stuff inland. Stand by, Pete. We're checking with the experts. Okay. Somewhat dynamic terrain. It's not, you know, it's not like the Great Plains of the United States or anything like that, where everything's a box. In the computer yard. Don't ask me what that tone was, I have no idea. Houston Intrepid, when I went my updated length of voice back up, it made a whistle on her car, so I'm just gonna leave it off. Roger, Al. You can sort of see some islands to our right, but uh, beyond those is Corsica. I don't think Corsica is visible right now. Coming at you with the radar, Nick. Those are islands between the coast of mainland Italy and uh, Corsica. But Houston, uh, that whistle you heard, uh, we think, was because we were still commanding. Uh, they'd like to have you try it again. Well, there we go. We have an explanation for that whistle. Check try it. Looks good. Down the voice back up there. Roger. Hazard bat coming on. Roger, Trumpet. Two 
In fact, directly off of this peninsula here, uh, this peninsula has a town called Piom, Piombino on it. But the island right off of it is Elba, where uh, I believe Napoleon was uh, held in captivity for a while. I mean, it was a pretty generous captivity, of course. Uh, he had a personal guard and technically ruled Elba, I suppose. But then, of course, uh, he and contrived his uh, return to France. And okay. then the whole Waterloo thing happened. So yep, there's a good view of Elba here. As far as the Piaggio P180 is concerned, it looks like 236 of them have been built. Intrepid has gone into program 63, which is an automatic maneuver to the power descent initiate attitude. Which is an engine belt forward, face up. Started being built in 1986 and it was part of the same generation as the Beechcraft Starship. It says that the current cost in 2019 is like 7.7 .7 million dollars. Carries up to nine people. Empty weight 3.8 tons. Range is about 1,500 nautical miles. For that, we'd have to be higher up, of course. And I have not fully fueled it. I think I only put half fuel in. Let's see, do we have a fuel gauge somewhere? Well, we have fuel quantity in pounds there. Well, we see we have a little bit more than an hour left. It should be fine, given current fuel flow. We look real good up here, Houston. How are you feeling down there? In traffic, Houston, we're feeling great. Well, that's good, because he's landing anyway. <laughs> uh. Better be feeling great. Oh, always with the jokes on this one. Snowman referred to 
by Pete Conrad aboard Intrepid is a shape of several craters, the belly button of which is where Surveyor 3 is located, forms a rough outline of a snowman. An earlier cue during the descent, after they have a visual acquisition of the landing site, will be a crescent of craters ranging behind the landing site across the path of their flight. So again, they're landing in the belly button of the snowman. That's the goal. Easy to remember. Down up ahead is Grosseto. I sure hope you have it lined up right, Yusuf, because there sure is a big mountain right in front of us right now. I hope we go down the middle. There is one valley. Roger, Pete. Houston, you probably just passed over at the office. Looks like they've taken a more recent okay. photo of Grosseto and its environs than the rest of the surrounding area. That's why it's in sort of a different color. They're doing a lot of references. Interestingly enough, Houston, in this attitude, I still can see the lunar horizon. I have to really fear to find it, but I can't see it. Roger, Pete. And in 40 seconds, we'll be going to be 63. The only label I have on the feature to the right is Orbitello. Looks pretty interesting. There's sort of a lagoon and then two strips of land and then a causeway in the middle. I haven't seen a feature like that a whole lot.
flight director Cliff Charlesworth taking a final poll here for giving a go for PDI. Looks like it's a go all the way around. PDI's power descent initiation, so the beginning of the landing. So again, until 500 feet, it's the horizontal velocity, range to target, and angle to target. And then he's going to add in the vertical velocity only close to the end. Oops, sorry for that sound. That was my sound, nothing to do with the other audios. Actually, they sound a little bit soft right now. I'm going to turn this a little bit lower. So that we can hear the landing properly. Hope you don't mind. It's been pretty loud so far anyway, the engine sound. I'm sure you're relieved by now. Intrepid has gone to the Vox mode in the communications. That is voice actuated circuit. Give me one minute. One minute. Roger, Pete. And I'll just circle around Rome until they actually land. If uh, we get to Rome ahead of that. We're not too far away now. We're about three quarters through our flight. So the engine starts off at low throttle and then goes to full throttle. Our range of the descent engine was something like 11% to 100%. However, oh, problem loading scenery VFR landmarks Italy. This is a little bit late to mention that, isn't it? I think Rome will still be okay. Um, but it didn't. It couldn't actually throttle between 60 and 100. So it's more like 11 to 60, and then to 100. It jumps to 100. Don't ask me how that all works. It's, it's all very complicated. And 
Intrepid Houston, now six niner plus zero four two zero zero. Over. Down we're flying over is Tarkinia. Roger, copy. Plus zero four two zero zero. That's affirmative. Twenty one sixty nine. Intrepid Houston, go for enter. It's in, babe. Intrepid Houston, looking good at two. Oh, okay. Roger. Things and are hanging in. Looks good here. Roger, Miss Ben agrees with things and eggs. Very good, very good. Feels good to be standing up in the G field again. Roger. Okay, two minutes and 30 seconds. 4276 minus 53 and 44,700. Looks good. Poking right down there. Look at our yes. Looks good, Pete. Am I? We've been giving the ED bats today. Yeah, don't forget the ED bats today. There you go. Three minutes. At 24 feet per second fast. At six feet per second low on each side. And about 100 feet low on altitude. Looking good. Intrepid Houston, Roger. You're looking good at three. Okay, Houston. I have an altitude light out and a velocity light out. Roger. I'm showing minus 918, minus 1,000. Looks good. How's it look to you, Houston? Roger. It looks good. Recommend you incorporate it. I'm not entirely sure what no that all means. Or what the lights were supposed to indicate. Let me know when it converges. I'm going back to my normal displays. Okay, Pete. Do remember they got to measure everything in feet per second. That's another thing. Intrepid Houston here. Go at four and go past five. Roger, copy. ED bats go. Roger, here comes. Looking good. Looking good. Right in there, super crit hangs at 1112. All the time. Okay, smoke over all the gates. Look at it. RCS looks good. Electrics look good. I'm gonna risk seeing Rome in full <laughs> quality. Well, not quite full quality, actually. Full quality would be turning that off, but higher quality first, and we'll see what the frame rates are like. Yeah, I get a fair amount of. Getting a fair amount of RCS firing, more than I think I should. But uh, how's the gimbal looking, you guys? Using? They're looking good, Pete. Okay. There's a five-minute hack, Al. Okay. Boy, it's really giving her a heck on the RCS. That must be the radar update. When I did the action update, it might need a 23 plus. Oh, it really is banging it around, isn't it? Intrepid Houston, throttle down at 6 plus 2-2. Two two. We got her 6 plus 2-2. Two two. Two two. Now, if it's I was really clever, I'd land okay. right when they land, but I'm, I'm not going to try that. <laughs> That's optimistic. Your computer is right on the money. Better turn that sequence camera on in a moment. Okay. 6 plus 2-2 two two for throttle down, huh? So this town is Braciano or Bracciano, okay, I don't know exactly how to pronounce it, it's double C and N and I. And then uh, there's a natural park of uh, the Braciano Martignano, hopefully. 
believe it's some sort of volcanic lake. Roger. We can sort of see some buildings at Rome up ahead. Pretty clear this patch on the right was taken at a different time of year than some of the rest of his stuff. <laughs> Such excitement. Outstanding, 42 degrees, Pete. Hey, it's right in the center of the crater. Look out there. I can't believe it. Amazing. <laughs> 42 degrees, Pete. Just keep talking. That's great. 42, we're passing 3,500. Coming down at about 99 feet a second. You're looking good. They called the area that he was supposed to land uh, Pete's parking lot. I think the net result was that he was a little bit outside of that, but for a good reason, I think it was. So to our left is the Olympic Stadium. Uh, directly in front of us is Vatican City. We can see the Colosseum. I think this clear area here is the grounds of the Circus Maximus. I thought it used to look different though. 
to right uh, at our left wing there. That area. I'm trying to see if I can find the forum. Anyway, the train station is one nice way to orient things in uh, Rome. You can see all those lines feeding into that rather large station there. Oh. They're, they're on the ground, I think. Okay, well, I'm gonna head over to Hugh Machino. I think it's the ch, ch sound on that, <laughs> the airport. Actually, it's funny, uh, the location that he was supposed to land in was chosen, the, the Pete's parking was chosen so that they wouldn't blast the surveyor probe with the dust, surveyor 3. But they figured out that uh, he ended up landing a little bit closer to it, I think. And they figured out that because he ended up blasting, I mean, not, not really hurting it, just basically sending some wind over from the engines, if you will. Not really wind, but you get what I mean. Um, it actually cleaned the probe. It had already been covered in dust, and actually probably ended up less covered in dust as a result. At least that's just my recollection. So you can see the airport L I R F. Right 
Okay, time to get into the cockpit now. Those are two guidance systems. Which I guess probably reset after landing to some other mode. We have a... Uh, some form of brakes on here, air brakes. I mean, Too much speed here. It is a rather slick plane. Doesn't seem to have a whole lot of drag to it. Engines idle. I've retracted the flaps so they don't break off. I think we'll still be too fast by the time we get to the runway. So this how much it decelerates the engine idle gear out and flaps up and we'll get it up okay Houston are we go or stay in traffic Houston uh, you're staying if you'd like to recycle and try it again we'll uh, talk to Sim <laughs> another joke <laughs> no not we're, this time yeah we're still mad at him for earlier in the week I think Roger. we'll go around Entering interesting sort of F-16 reminiscent main landing gear. Entrapping Houston, the she's holding fine and the venting's going along well. It's physically a very large airport that takes a lot of space. You can see they've got fields in the middle here for some reason. <laughs> But yeah, that's a huge place. Normally, they'd put the terminals in between the runways. Here, uh, they've put it off to the side and they've got these fields in the middle instead. It's interesting. And there's a lot of runways to choose from. Well, okay, maybe only... I mean, there seems to be two on this side, right? And then there's one over there and I think there's one off over to the right. On the map, the second runway on this side looked like a taxiway, actually. But it's clearly not. 
Brad, you're closing the accident. It's closed. Houston, do you have a high gain? Roger, Dick. This is Apollo Control. The third and fourth humans to land on another planetary body. Two rather exuberant humans <laughs> have completed a oh. touchdown at Site 7. Apparently rather close. Rather exuberant humans. Roger, we're looking. That should be the name of a book on them. <laughs> Two rather exuberant humans. <laughs> and Jerry, do you get the torquing angles in the time? That's affirmative. We haven't, Dick. Okay, this looks like a good platform, yeah? Who comes along to tell at you? Roger, Intrepid. Okay, Houston, you copy in the nano floor, and we'll go recycle. It's plus zero zero four Intrepid Houston, you can close your fuel vent now, and she's holding. Got your fuel vent closed. I should probably set up my face track no IR for this. So face track no IR just uses a regular webcam. If, I don't know how it compares to track IR because I don't have track IR, but probably not too different. Considering I've got a decent webcam and I don't have a whole lot of background stuff that could mess it up. Intrepid Houston, go. Did you copy the results of the Axe Cal down there? Oh, that's affirmative, Al. 
Roger, thank you, Dick. Okay, looking good. The Yankee Clipper Houston, over. Okay, we are down. Brakes. Roger, Clipper, uh, we'd like to try something with your uh, high-gain antenna. Go to the wide beam width and auto, over. We can probably take this taxiway. Okay, yeah, but wide and auto. Roger, Dick. Okay, we have arrived in Rome. The next flight will be to Venice. I'm gonna pause the audio right there. And we'll be flying in another Italian plane, an MB339. Going a bit fast on the taxiway. Anyway, so with this arrival, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.